But look at this. This looks like the Chop and Brew logo. Oh! I'm going to get a cease and desist on that. All right, everybody, we're here gathered on Zoom for a very forceful tasting notes. <laughs> oh! Ah, fuck out. So the beer we're about to drink is a homebrew by Mr. Paul Illa, friend of the show and Patreon supporter, Paul Illa. He brewed it for friend of the show and Patreon supporter, Bob. Did y'all know that about each other? Y'all are Patreon homies. No. Awesome. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for your support. Well, yeah. thank you for your support. <laughs> so we're drinking a homebrew that is based on a craft brew from Australia once called Jedi Juice. I don't believe it is called so anymore, but Bob, tell us a quick backstory of this beer and then we'll get into the recipe and all the good stuff of this hazy any IPA. Okay, uh, well, I think it was our first trip to Australia. My wife is from there and has family there. And uh, we flew down for my 40th birthday or around close to my 40th birthday. And one of my brother-in-laws really loves craft beer down there. And there's so much, like, there's there's a lot happening there, but they're, I'd say at the time they were a year, two years behind us when it comes to, comes to beers. And this was in 2017, I believe. And like New England IPAs were just hitting the scene. And here it was kind of like, we're mid stride with those everybody's loving them and yeah so um we went to the local bottle as they call it down there bottle shop <laughs> and we bought a slab of of jedi juice and among other beers and a slab is a flat of beer uh 24 cans if you will i remember having this one and it was fantastic it was one of my favorite beers down there they've got a lot of great beers like i said they're at the time they were just a little behind us um Thankfully, that whole kettle sour thing didn't really catch on down there. <laughs> um, but yeah, we brought some back and I know I've shared some with Chip. It was that darn good. And um, yeah, it, I can't say enough good things about it. So what made this one stand out kind of among some of the others that you had? Um, for me, it was... Um, the flavors, it was very I'm, robust is a bad term for it, but it was, it was, it was very citrusy, very, very floral. Its nose was amazing and it didn't cause any sort of palate fatigue for me. A lot of the times when it comes to uh, New England pale ales, um, it, it just like, okay. Yeah, I just drank a, a glass of orange juice. I can't keep doing that all night long. And this was had enough tartness to it where it kind of cut that. And it I, I won't call it a sipper. Like I could sip on it all night long. But I didn't have any problems drinking six, ten of them, whatever we did that <laughs> one night in Half a slab. Melbourne. Half so. a slab of ribs. <laughs> Probably at least. They describe it as 7.1 alcohol per volume in hops we trust. Uh, Hop Nation Brewing Company, Melbourne based brewing company specializing in the production of small batch beers are Jedi Juice. New England IPA was originally brewed for the GABS Beer Fest. And now we bring it to you in a can. Hazy, mm -hmm. juicy, citrusy hop aroma, finishing off with intense flavor, great mouthfeel. Rawaka, Nelson Savin, or Savin, Citra Mosaic. This beer will bring out the Jedi in everyone. So, Bob, I guess recently you were like fiending for the beer. You were going down memory lane of taste buds, and you pulled out you you found this beer smith recipe by a user named Gash. And <laughs> you were like, "Hey, how about you brew this for me?" And I was like, "Hey, I don't even brew for me anymore. How about we get Paul Hill to <laughs> brew it for all of us?" 
And Ella is down to brew like I, I mean, four times a week was like, buy me the stuff and I'll yeah, that, that sounds very familiar. Yeah, the, like, you know, we've, during these unprecedented times, as it were, we haven't been able to get back to Australia. They won't let us in. So I was like, I need a little something from there. So we got it. And then Ella brewed it. Ella, like, so we'll put the recipe up or we'll link to this, this gash person's. Um, I'm not sure if I'm looking at the right one because he's got several. The one I'm looking at doesn't have the Rawaka, which I knew we couldn't find either, right? We subbed it for like Sots, I think. Yeah, uh, uh, Sots, and um, I ended up adding a little bit of Holler Tower because I didn't have enough IBUs. Tell me about the recipe and how it compares to like other hazies you've done. Well, I think the biggest thing with hazy in this case is it's actually a little bit less oats than I would normally use. Um, I like oat malt and flaked oats just to give not only the combination of body, but that, uh, that heavy amount of proteins, right? I mean, I want haze forming particles. So, um, the wheat malt will do kind of the same thing. It, I think the wheat malt will add a little bit of, you know, that, that um, I want to say wheat twang or a little bit of acidity from the, the wheat malt itself. Um, I, but I mean, and this is, this is pretty wheat heavy. Uh, I think it's, well, according to this, it's 40% wheat. Yeah, of the wheat um, malt. So I use quite a few, ha- yeah, wheat malt, yeah. And I used quite a few handfuls of uh, uh, rice hulls to make sure that I was getting good uh, circulation um, during the mash. I mean, the grandfather does a pretty nice job, uh, but when you have that much uh, uh, wheat and then you throw in a little bit of those flaked oats and it, it can gum up pretty quickly. And I mean, I'm pushing in this recipe alone, I was pushing the limits of the grandfather to start with. I mean, I think it was like almost 15 pounds of malt. Uh, 14, oh, yeah. yeah, almost 15 pounds, of maybe close to 15. So uh, I think the uh, maximum is uh, 18. So yeah, it's a, it's a heavy duty one. The grandfather is, uh, does a really nice job of handling fairly big mashes the only thing i that would what does suffer seems to be when you get above that 12 or 13 pounds as your efficiency does kind of start to drop off and i i actually had that happen in this case where there's just it's so dense and there's so much malt in there that your efficiency can, and i think this is pretty normal for most situations where a bigger mash your efficiency does start to tail down just a bit but you know you, you you plan for it, I guess. I mean, if you you know, I know Chips had this happen where he's had to boil a little bit longer to get to the uh, uh, gravity he was looking for, and I I think I might have oversparged a little bit too. So there's that, but you know, I mean, it on the back end it wasn't really that big of a deal. And there there's a a, a rather large amount of hops uh, in this recipe, so. Um, I guess, you know, I mean, hindsight, if I, if, if, if I would have been making this recipe for myself, um, I might have maybe subbed a little bit of that um, lower alpha acid hops at the start of the boil for something a little bit higher alpha acid just to get the bitterness. Because you put three and a half ounces of low alpha acid at the start of the boil and then you dump a bunch in at the end of the whirlpool and there's so much hot material in the bottom it's like runoff was really slow too so you know these are things that have happened to me before but uh, you know you learn from this run and the next run you change a couple of things to make it a little bit more efficient were you just trying to be a little more true to the rest of like you knew like this is gonna possibly cause an issue but you're like you know what let's go for the recipe and see how it tur- turns out 100 percent. i mean there there's you know i don't know what's going to happen for sure i have a good idea but at the same time it's like well this is what chip presented and this is what i want to present to you gash gash presented so what do you think bob like from your sensory memory how does this stand up from what I remember, um, this is very similar 
there's a little bit, and I think we've talked about this uh, sidebar um, is it's a little bit more bitter, if you will. Um, it's got a little more bite to it, um, which I don't mind at all. It cuts that citrusy juice bomb that, you know, certainly does happen um, within, within any IPA. Um, but it, 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 there, the other thing is, you know, water conditioning is as weird as it sounds, there's just something different about Australian water, but yeah, this is so close. And it was the, uh, I'm already on my second growler. Um, and God bless you, Paul. Illa. It's, it's, it's delicious. And that first growler, I nearly drank to myself in one night and it was a rough morning after that <laughs> and it, it was well worth it because it's delicious it's it i'm not kidding it's one of my favorite beers and i'm generally not a fan of homebrew <laughs> <laughs> well, well i guess i'll take that as high praise then but also that. sketchy craft beer in general i would think yeah you know you're not wrong <laughs> i mean hey at least you didn't have to recall this because the mango cheesecake is still fermenting in the bottle oh, <laughs> gosh that is the worst so the only thing we couldn't find was rawaka and we were kind of surprised that like the sub for it was fairly i don't know if i call them innocent but like sots hollertow i would have thought rawaka's sub would be something more modern and fruity but that was interesting to see but i i definitely get like that big white grape uh, almost like red ruby grapefruit kind of vibe off of the nose and the flavor. Yeah, the 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 grapefruit definitely is. Uh, the grapefruit is strong with this one. <laughs> uh, got him. Yep. And uh, I kind of get a little bit of a. I mean, it's fairly dry, and I think that's one of the things too that uh, you know. If, if I was going to do it again, I'd want something that maybe uh, I'd either raise the mash, te mash temp just a touch or maybe use a yeast that is a, a little more uh, or a little less attenuative so that it doesn't dry out quite as much. Um, and uh, that I think that's where a little bit more of the sharper bitterness comes from is that it's just it's coming off drier. And how did this ferment? Was this a quick one or? Yeah, uh, uh, Nottingham is not known for taking its time, but I think I ran this one at 66, uh, which is something I usually do for IPAs. I maybe, if I was going to do it again, I'd maybe tail it back just a little bit, maybe closer to the lower 60, 63, 64 to slow it down a little bit. It, it just went like bad out of hell when you're making a recipe for the first time, you know, there's little things that you can uh, tweak the next run. Um, but that'd be one of the things, you know, I'd say changing the yeast, maybe changing the temperature. And, it, you know, when you're talking about Australian water, I mean, it's one of those things where if you had the time to research and find out, okay, this is what their water profile should be. Right. You, know, you could do some adjustments to your water as well. If you were to do this again, would you change the yeast or would you leave it with the Nottingham just at a cooler temp? Uh, first attempt after this attempt, yes, I would probably just use the same yeast, cool it down a little bit and say, cut my water with a little bit of RO by 20, 30% just to tail back some of those, uh, uh, you know, hop accentuating minerals. So I'm looking, it doesn't say like where Gash is from, but considering that he called out Gladfield, Lager, Light Malt and Glad down South, we, it's uh, New Zealand. Gladfield, at least, is from New Zealand. I don't know if this guy is from. I'm, I'm, I'm going on a limb to say he's from Australia or New Zealand. He probably might know somebody at the brewery um, that helped him sure. get to this recipe a little bit, maybe. Um, I have a hard time believing that they use Nottingham dry, but maybe they do. I'm, I, I don't know why I'm saying that, because I'm never actually that surprised outside of America. Like It seems like a lot of people use dry yeast aside from the continent, but when you get to like South America and like other far off continents, well, um, I mean, but yeah, I reckon this. And I think a lot of that has, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with uh, uh, 
the ability to keep it cool, right? I mean, uh, liquid yeast it probably costs money to ship it out of the country, and it's just the uh, the ability to actually keep it cool, or it's just more convenient to uh, deal with dry yeast. What did you use in place of Gladfield Lager Light Malt? Did you just use North Star? North Star Pills, baby. All right, North Star Pills. <laughs> and what wheat malt? Like, um, I don't remember exactly what the wheat malt was. Uh, I think that's might have been actually uh, a a leftover bit that you may have supplied me with at one point. Oh, okay. Who knows? Oh. Probably. BSD grab bag from brew for good or who knows what it's very possible I mean that's a lot though six pounds of wheat malt I don't know where the heck I would have gotten that it doesn't surprise me there's Bob's growler growler number two boo, 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 boo. <laughs> sorry Phoebe so yeah I would just ask like you brewed a lot of these kind of beers Ella what do you think about this combo this mosaic citra Nelson <laughs> is that one you've ever messed with before and how does it kind of compared to other um, combos so citra and mosaic is like the i want i don't want to say holy trinity that's kind of the of dynamic hops. duo right it, but it really is i mean it you know mosaic just plays off of any flavor that goes along with citrusy hops so uh, uh citra is just the perfect the perfect blend uh to go along with with that uh you know, I mean, mosaic is really it covers the gamut. It's got it's got pine, it's got um, citrus, it's got that resiny, uh, almost uh, uh, what's the word uh, herbal notes to it. I mean, it really does go. I mean, hence the name mosaic, right? I mean, it just plays well with everything. And uh, Nelson Sauvin, um I've used it a couple of times before this, but not at the rate I was using it in this case. Um, opening that pouch, it just reminds you of how freaking good that hop really is. I mean, everything about it is awesome. It's just got this big, like, yeah, white grape, herbal, citrus notes that are, I mean, it, it's, it's just awesome. The hops listed as dry hops on Gash's recipe, did you... You didn't do them as traditional dry hops, right? We did like late fermentation hops. So the first dry hop was after 48 hours. Um, so I guess <laughs> of that bio, bio, bio transformation, right? I mean, that's, that's with these hops, you want to try to get that. Uh, the yeast is really turning through that uh, uh, wort and, or beer at that point, I guess, but, um, and, you know, tr transforming some of those uh, uh, flavor compounds from the hops themselves. And then I dry hopped after seven days, basically at the end or, or when it was complete. I mean, seven days, I mean, it was basically done. But uh, uh, so you get those, uh, uh, you don't blow off any of those uh, uh, aromas uh, during fermentation. So, But still in but primary, what, right? Was, like... uh, 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 yep. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean with, with the conical too, I'm only using one vessel, so. Well, I do have, I actually do have a picture uh, that I took when I cleared the cone of all the hop material that was in the bottom of the cone. And, uh, you know, there was almost a, I think there was like seven or eight ounces of hops that went into a five gallon batch during fermentation. Sure. So it was pretty thick. I need to get you the GoPro for a full brew to show off that conical, the glycol. The stuff that we kind of miss out on all these little zoomy zooms. By and, the way, really the only I've gone over to the dark side. Oh, if I share my screen, will it like Jeff, record the dog. screen share? I'm pretty sure it will. Here, I'm going to show you. Can you see the screen? Nope. There it is. Yes. So oh, now David. It's, it's just called J Juice. Like you said, they took the branding off because of the kids, but it's still, but that doesn't look like Princess Leia either. They totally, and it's not Yoda's face. Like, well, we can't tell the side of the right. can, but that's definitely not the Princess Leia of the can. That's just some badass lady. Introducing Jerry Juice, new hair, same beer. <laughs> 
probably about a year ago, I want to say, like, I wrote to Hop Nation and was like, hey, I would really like to brew that beer. And I never heard back from them. So it was cool finding at least a recipe that would, yeah, right? A recipe that was at least in the ballpark. I, I will say this, like, I emailed them from my, um, my Surly Brewing email address so that like i'm like oh yeah they'll probably think you know i work for a brewery and i'm just a fan and they'll be like oh cool yeah sure but then hindsight is 2020 it's kind of like no way man you work for a brewery you're not gonna brew our beer over there so you should have you should have emailed them from bob at noob dot no at neverbrewedabeer.com firstbatch.net <laughs> firstbatch.net no, no, learning no. to homebrew.org net. <laughs> no and you got to break out that old net zero account uh, that mine was uh juno oh juno yeah, Dude, yeah that's what don osborne still uses to this day and i had never heard of it before i met him that's not still going is it yeah dude his, well i won't put his email on blast but his email is something at juno.net or dot com dot com dot com and i never heard of it when i met him 10 years ago and it's still his email in 2021 <laughs> so is that like the equivalent of like having an aol absolutely pretty damn close. Like, if, if you're still using your aol email address man well i i seriously i can't Ill, i can't thank you enough for this this okay. is an amazing treat and i had no idea like just like saying something to chip and f- five minutes later he's like yeah ill is brewing it uh it's done we'll link to both the gashes Beersmith recipe cloud recipe will link to Illa's Minnesota version of what we needed to do. And yeah, dude, I think it's, I don't know, it's gone, obviously. I thought it was really good. I've had a lot of hazies in the last year, and I was, and I've had a lot of your hazies specifically, and I thought it held its own. I thought it was really good. I thought I liked it kind of to Bob's point. It wasn't like this super soft, cloudy pillow of citrusy juice it actually like it was bitter it held its own as an ipa but as we all saw before i drank it all if anybody has a glass hold it up it is cloudy it's nice it's got some body yeah dude look at that that shine baby all right so from a craft beer in australia to an empty beer glass in minnesota i want to give a shout out to illa for making this happen a shout out to bob for wanting to make it happen. A shout out to Hop Nation Brewing. Shout out to Gash over on the Beersmith on the second monitor. This was a, I guess it was kind of international collaboration that only one side knew about. (laughs) (laughs) So we'll uh, we'll do it. This was an imperialistic effort and I appreciate it. We're gonna put both recipes on the website. Paul Illa, you're the man as always. Thanks for brewing it. Thanks for sharing it. Thanks, Paul. Absolutely.